I volunteer uh, as, a, as a desire to go and help others. It was there that there were uh, people in need and that's, uh, that's kind of where our heart is in uh, uh, this side of a business. We, we enjoy helping others to restore their lives, get things back to normal. So it's a huge opportunity to go and help some, uh, some people that were in dire straits to try to restore their lives. And also want to just go over there and help. You know, you see it in the news, you saw so many people without power and how the, how the people of Puerto Rico were suffering so much. And to just be a part of going over there to try to help rebuild that infrastructure and, and deliver power to these people was, you know, just a, a great honor. And knowing that it had been months since the storm had hit, there was still so much devastation. And, you know, it, they didn't have power. In a lot of cases, they may not have running water. You know, their whole sense of normalcy had been turned upside down. A and it was just a very, it, it was a very humbling and heartbreaking experience. At first, I was wondering how we were gonna be able to do this uh, with, the, with the amount of people that we had and the amount of work that was actually there. Uh, we all knew that it was going to take a lot of time, a lot of energy, and, and a lot of equipment to get these people power back just in the areas that we were working in. Talking to my family some, they were asking, asking what the train was like, and I said, well, if you took the, took the Rocky Mountains and then just laid the Amazon jungle on top of it, I said, that's, that's what it would be like. Things that we were dealing with just to try to get a simple piece of wire back to a pole, it could take us days, and a whole crew, something that we could do here in a matter of an hour, was taking us days. And on plenty of different occasions, we would be on hands and knees, crawling up the side of a mountain, trying to get to where the work needed to be done because vehicle access was just not an option. You see those mountains? You have to walk through those mountains and find the wire, cut the trees, pull it back to the pole. We were faced with a lot of situations where uh, power lines would go over a valley or between mountain ridges and uh, it was nowhere near safe for us to even try to cut away or a path through. So we would use some specialized equipment. We had a bridger. Basically it's a, a gun that shoots a projectile with a string tied to it across a valley. Not only did you have to think outside of the box, but you had to come up with new ways and also think about what you could do to reroute these lines or um, have a way of bringing those lines back into these neighborhoods so these people get power back. For me, seeing the people of Puerto Rico smiling again, especially when we were leaving the island, it was that they had hope to go on. Well, when the power started coming back on, it was an amazing feeling, not only for us, but for the people of Puerto Rico. They would come out of the houses cheering. It was a phenomenal feeling. Uh, they, they had been without for so long. In the mountains of southern Puerto Rico, the workday pauses at noon. Lunch is prepared. And a prayer is said in a language most of these men can't understand. But a message of gratefulness doesn't have to be translated word for word. And they treated us like gold when they had you know, little. Uh, feeding us and, and just happy to see somebody there working on it. So when the lights did come on, oh, they were, they were ecstatic. And here we are in just a few days with a handful of trucks for what the task was and we restored everything that we went to. We did not turn our backs on one mountain, we went up. The satisfaction that they were providing every day to people of the, the people of Puerto Rico, I've heard so many times, we're gonna get it done. It could have easily been, we're not doing this, this is too hard, the terrain's too tough, but not once that I hear any one of our Duke employees say I'm giving up because it's too tough. Because they really felt satisfaction for what they were doing. You know, sometimes they only turn 10 people's lights on. When those 10 people's light came back on, back on and they yelled and screamed, that just motivated the team more every day. The first time I was told thank you for helping them, I was probably speechless. Uh, I wasn't sure how to respond because I was more 
that I was thankful to be there rather than being thanked for what I was doing. And that was what was consistently felt by everyone that was there. We didn't want the thank yous. We were glad to be there to have the opportunity to be helping those, the people of Puerto Rico. So sometimes it's more than just getting the power back on. It's about restoring a way of life. And it's the simplest of things. So in, that, in a situation we had, it was more about getting their water back, being able to just have fresh water, wash their clothes, being able to wash their face. So to take some kind of resemblance of the simplest things in life, it's not all about just having their lights back on. And that's something that we've all kind of got accustomed to.